The amount of people who come up to me or business people who message me saying, we appreciate what you guys like you and Jim from NEPA Pizza Review and a few other people do in the area by not blasting the places that you go to because you don't know how bad that hurts small businesses when we hear negative stuff about our place. And that's why I do what I do. But people think I'm bullshitting my reviews. And it's just, that's just nonsense. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to post a negative review. And I'm not going to post a bullshit. I'm not going to lie about something I eat. And it's not. It's still his. I don't miss it. It's go, go, go. Like a go, go flow. And I'm almost known. And I told you so. When I throw these flows, like it's Rochambeau. And I ain't too close. It's Joe Smoke goes. And I'm on my grind. That is all the time. I do not do brace. That's right. I stay in dry. And look, I'm back with a little bit of that. A little more cash than it came with. Ready that cat is out that bag. But I still ask the boy got skills. I don't need her. I don't need him. I don't need help with me. I got this. I can sing songs. I can spit raps. And I can do both. Even do this. Word. This episode is brought to you by Sweat Tent, the pioneers of the portable wood-burning sauna. Did you know that using the sauna three to four times per week could reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by up to 50% and make you 60% less likely to experience Alzheimer's disease? That's why I've been a big fan of the sauna for years. But having to go to a crowded gym to do it isn't ideal. And all the at-home options are bulky and expensive. That's why I only use the Sweat Tent for my sauna needs. It's the most storable and affordable wood-burning sauna on the market. It not only takes minutes to set up, but it can reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit in 30 minutes or less. So whether you're enjoying it yourself in your backyard, with friends, or in need of a reliable sauna on the go, Sweat Tent is your best choice for the most portable, storable, and enjoyable outdoor sauna experience. All on the Stacks listeners will receive $100 off when you use code OTS. Visit SweatTent.com today to get $100 off your purchase with code OTS at checkout. Again, that's SweatTent.com to get $100 off with code OTS. Sweat Tent, helping you fire up your home wellness routine. This episode is brought to you by Wilkes Consulting, a Ramsey preferred coaching firm. Are you drowning in debt? Is the weight of financial stress holding you back from living the life you were meant to live? Then it's time to break free and regain control of your financial future. Wilkes Consulting specializes in financial and debt consulting. Their team of four highly trained Ramsey Solutions Advisors are ready to help you take charge of your money. Whether you're looking to get out of debt, pay off student loans, or simply need assistance on how to prepare to buy a home, Wilkes Consulting can help you fine-tune your budget and provide the resources and guidance you need to meet your goals. Don't let debt or the fear of finances control your life any longer. Head over to WilcoPA.com and book a hassle-free, no-obligation call. Your first step towards financial freedom. Again, that's WilcoPA.com, W-I-L-C-O-P-A.com. Wilkes Consulting, making financial independence a reality. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his Burn Board offers a low impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out-of-shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's theburn, T-H-E-B-R-R-N.com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. What's up, podcast? It's your host, Bill Corcoran Jr. I'm here in the studio with Brian DiMattei. Brian, welcome back to the On The Stacks podcast. Bill, thanks for having me. I came all the way from across the Food Fight studio. You did. To come into the On The Stacks studio. And it, was a, it was a far uh, far walk for you. It was. I had to stop at the water cooler, fill up my jug, because mm -hmm. you once told me now that you know, I'm part of OTS, I can't have the bottles of water. That's right. But in a case of emergency, he will give me one. He's I do. He's not completely yeah, I, I don't. I don't let everyone here am, go, go dehydrated. But I am told to... Make sure I fill up my water bottle. And yeah, I did that you before did. I came in here. Yep. Look, yes. Yeah, you even got the same one as me. I do. You're just covered in more stickers. Mine now. came into my life. Uh, I was at the Dunmore Good Tree, Dunmore location, and somebody left a water bottle there. And Frank's like, Brian, you want this? I can't stand it. People leave the water bottles. Wait, everywhere. somebody left that? Dude, there was a box. 
of water bottles at the gym. So this was used? After two weeks. Used. They give them away. Yeah. That was a used water bottle. Used, washed in my sink <laughs> with <laughs> soap and water. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I didn't pay for it. I would never. I, I would never pay. How much did these cost? I was going to say, you, I, I can't see you. No offense. How much, did these, how much did these cost? I don't know. Probably like 80 bucks. I would never, never yeah. spend $80 well, no. well, for well, a that, water bottle. I think bottle, that, that's the customized one. I think mine, cause mine's customized. Okay. It might have been like 70 or 75. Well, I got a yours, stick. I got yours, a, is, yours is um, I got make, a, makeshift custom. I got a stickers to customize. But I would never pay $80. Yeah. I wouldn't pay $50 for a cup. You wouldn't pay need... $50 for this? No. If it was customized? No. You're insane. You could pay ten dollars for this something that's similar to it. Now it's time to keep the water mm-hmm. cold. I get it, yeah, but it's yeah. gonna get the job done. I I drink room temperature water anyway. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I do take advantage of the cold water. I just I the just water cooler here. I just liked the quality <clears throat> of this also because I can customize it. I'm sure you can customize other ones too. I hear you. But I just like I just preferred this brand. Well, for a Christmas mm-hmm. bonus for the Food Fight podcast, I will be expecting a customized. Yeti bottle. Okay, that's that's fair from you guys. Okay, Christmas bone. Who we said Jimmy? You're... Jimmy could buy it. Jimmy could buy it. I was gonna say yeah. Who said? Who even said you're getting a Christmas? Oh no one. No one said I was. I'm just, I'm just assuming. Okay, good. I'm gonna get one. All right, we'll make Jimmy or Eric buy it. That sounds great. Yeah, that or will. Great. Speaking of beverages, yeah, speaking. What of... is what's going on with this? <clears throat> yeah, blood orange. I said it wrong before. I I think it's pronounced cardamom. Okay, and what's in here? Uh, it's got two milligrams of THC and four milligrams of CBD. And Bill, let me tell you, when you started to um, started to shout this out more, I was like, yeah. "How is this even possible in PA?" Because I have my medical license, right? And you can't buy this at the dispensaries. Mm-hmm. So I, I went online, and it is—it's completely legal yeah. to have this shipped to you in PA. I don't yes. understand how it's possible. I don't either. It doesn't make any sense. It does, but yet, but it don't matter. It's completely legal, yes. and you can buy it if you want to. Yeah, and. Uh, I was just in do New that, do that awkward reach for the, yeah. uh, the this is, this is a I don't think they called a low boy but I am because it's like small whereas the have, this this one's called high boy and you can okay. see the difference the little yeah look at this there's a little the little eight ounce can see this see yes. the difference and a big uh, difference there. you know obviously the high boy has five milligrams yes so it's two and a half times the uh, THC CBD is the best part of these sometimes man they really they the, the pure the really good CBD mm-hmm. relaxes you it's it's like taking like really good ibuprofen without the stomach bother you know these, these are why. yeah these are very relaxed yeah. well, well we gotta stop talking about it let's, okay let's crack, try it out crack these open here is this gonna be like an official review yeah all right smell absolutely. It do you smell things first do you do a smell test i don't normally what's this what's it smell like tell people what it smells like first definitely smells like an orange okay but a um and like a little tangerine-ish orange but like one of those you don't smell marijuana I don't. Really? I mean, it's very subtle, I think. Maybe because I'm used to smelling it. Yeah, because you're a pro. Let's say I'm a, yeah, let's say I'm a pro. You're, I'm, you're medically licensed. I'm a medically licensed. I'm yeah. a professional marijuana user. I don't don't drink it yet. We got to do a we little, do a little che- toast. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Coming back cheers. on the show. Cheers to your show, by the way. I appreciate cheers that, man. Cheers to food. We We're going to tell that story look, in a little I don't, while. Even know what, I don't even know what side I'm on. We over got here. food fight food, over there. Food we got over. food fight here. Food fight here. I wanted to put my, my sticker on Bill's Shh. microphone, but we it's couldn't home. find tape, he told yeah, me. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's no tape yeah, anywhere. Yeah, I, have, I, sure. I have to send you the invoice for that. I don't even have that on my own microphone. Yeah. The sweat tent pays more. So. Huh? Sweat tent pays more, so that's why they're on yours. Sweat tent. You got to give me tent. a free trial on a sweat tent. Well, you know, you need to get a sweat tent. Let me tell you what. I just sat in the sauna at the gym the other day for over 20 minutes, and I got real into it, but I, I was sweating my balls out. Mm. I had no towel. Right, hold, on, got, hold on. Before we okay. tell, before we, tell okay. we, we, we forgot. Hold on. Yes. We, if anyone's interested in these drinks, use code OTS to get 20% off. Blood uh, orange. Drinkcan.com. That's, and can is spelled with two N's, so it's drink can with two n's Let's try it dot out. com we didn't taste it yet how was that ad cheers that was something really good thank you something really good okay we're making a lot of mouth sounds right now people oh, are people, like, are, people are, there's people loving it oh and people people, people are hating people, it somebody just shut I'm the, on, somebody just shut the show off. i'm on i'm on the side of shut the fucking show off are you no let me listen to people i can't stand mm. people chewing in the mouth. not me neither that's why i never like doing food reviews like eating on the camera but people love it people mm-hmm. want that noise there's youtube channels dedicated to what do oh, they call it? They call it ASMR. ASMR. Fuck that yeah. shit, man. Yeah. All right. What do you think? <clears throat> Give me your honest. Brian's never had one of these before. It's incredibly refreshing. Mm. It's 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 got a good combination to it. Um. Now I want your honest opinion. Do you genuinely? Do no, you I'm genuinely. Like I'm genuinely enjoying it. I love I love orange flavored beverages. 
I don't know what it is. Orange soda bothers my tongue. I can't explain it. Bothers I think I'm to something. Maybe I'm maybe I'm allergic to something in orange soda. It bothers my throat a little bit. Uh, but I love oranges. I definitely love blood oranges and like little the little uh, the little mini oranges, the little yeah, yeah, uh, the, the little, little cuties. Yeah, the little cuties. They're Wendy's. in season. The they cuties. are in season. They have to be the cutie brand though. Yes, they have. They to be peel the perfectly. They have to be cold to refrigerate those bad yes, boys. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah, you don't want you don't want yeah. Mm -mm. But this little bit of ice, some squeezed in some squeezed fresh orange in there. Mm. That's a good drink right there, bro. Mm. I don't drink alcohol. But I would drink this. Me neither. Not anymore. I don't drink alcohol. I, quit I had I quit one drinking. Corona. I had a Corona on vacation. That was the first beer I had in three years. Now wow. I know we talked about we talked about my sobriety mm -hmm. the last time I was on the show. But I'm very open about um, when I decided to get into the, mer the medical marijuana field about two years ago because of my aches and my pains. Um, ibuprofen's great, but my stomach doesn't really agree with it. It's not overall good for you, you know what I mean? I put a lot of Tylenol on my body back in the day with all the stuff I used to take, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I was nervous about going on, you know, doing marijuana again, smoking pot again, but it was it relaxes me. It makes me sleep at nighttime, you know what I mean? I do more CBD than THC and You do? You know you do more C B D I take a lot of I take I try to um, up dose like 30, 40 milligrams a day um, with CBD. I'll give a little break with it. It's definitely a difference. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. There's creams. There's there's tinctures. You know, you put the drops under your tongue. Yeah. Uh, they're great for nighttime. Very relaxing. Yeah. These, I don't these, these are, these, <clears throat> for me at least, and again, I, I know it's different for everybody, right? THC affects everybody mm -hmm. differently, whether it's edible mm -hmm. or smoked or whatever. But <clears throat> um, for me, uh, it's very relaxing. And it's, I mean, dude, I, I've never slept better in my life. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good, nice. Good night. Yeah, good night. We're done. So, luckily, I don't yeah. really have problems. I don't have problems sleeping. When I first got out, when I got out of treatment, I had trouble sleeping. But things have gotten a lot better. I'm currently in a hotel right now, That's and right, the you bed are. the bed wasn't great the first night. But now I've been there for like ten days already. Any bugs? No bugs. A very clean room. Nope. I asked to see the room first mm -hmm. before I checked in. Okay. And the face I got. But now I've been there for over a week now. They're real, they're real nice to me. I'm still waiting for a free night. But the reason I'm in a hotel is because recently <laughs> yeah. I've been through a life change. Um, I know you would have with, as two Bill, and we're going to talk about that. Um, you know, currently, you know, me and my fiance, Felix fiance, we broke up a few weeks ago, and uh, I was staying there for a little while long until I found the place. And I found the place. My buddies let me move into a house, and you know, no fault of his own. You know, we're waiting for PP and L to come turn the power on because they had to change the wires over. It's been like six days, and they still haven't come there to fix the wire. So, like you know, everyone that I, you know, everyone that's close to me offered me a couch or a spare room, or whatever, like that. You know what I mean? But like, I like my own space. Yeah. I like my own space, and you know, I'm in a position where I could afford a couple of nights in the hotel, this kind of stuff like that. And I'm staying there right now, but it's getting old now. <laughs> yeah. I need to be settled. I'm not eating right. Um, I finally got. I, I finally ordered. You know, meals from you know Fit AF Nutrition. We said Jordan right. on the show. So um, shout out twenty percent off your first seven meals. Use code OTS. Food. Oh, oh, <laughs> I got him. He, he got me first. He's, oh, got, you got, bastard! Got you should have seen his got face got when I was getting ready to say it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I almost got it. Right, if bro. anybody uses your code, no, it's all um, good. It's all then, good. Uh, I get all the commission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I get all. Yeah. <laughs> Use code food fight, all right? That was I appreciate guys, it. Step yeah, Ryan no. up. Use, yeah, use code great. food fight. That's great. I was... <laughs> <laughs> had to do it. I had to. Your, your face was great. I'm but, like, what the fuck is this guy? This guy's hijacking oh, my I did. show. I absolutely hijacked it. My I advertisers? Hijacked it. Come on. Oh, it was great. Um, Sheesh. Um, so I finally got meals from him. So I was, it was really nice. To, uh, I should have got them a week or so ago, but I'm so displaced. Yeah. You know? I'm lucky to be where I am. I mean, you know, things didn't work out with me. I, my fiance. It's a very, it's a big life change. You know, it's upsetting. It's kind of a mutual breakup, um, but like you know, I know where my faults were. You know, I, mean, I have to admit my faults and admit where I was wrong to improve my next relationship and just mm -hmm. me in general. You know, what I mean, if I was sitting there being naive and blaming her for everything, that wouldn't be fair. Right, you know, that wouldn't be fair. We both had our own part in it. But um, I moved out with thinking I was going to live in the new place for a little while until either now your hotel um, hop until either buy a until either he finds me a smaller apartment to live in or I buy a house. And um, but right now things aren't working out the way they're supposed to. So I'm going to stay in the hotel the rest of the week. If PPN doesn't come turn the power on, I'm going to move in with my my buddy who owns uh, who I work with every day at the gym, yeah, Tyler Mooney. Yeah. So or I'll maybe, stay with him on the weekend. Yeah, or maybe you can there. sleep uh, in your studio over there. There's a, there's, I moved that bit, that Dude, couch. By the way, I moved that couch in there. Yeah, that couch pulls out to a bed. I would 100% stay here. Would you? Yeah, you give me a key if I let you. 
You gotta give me a key. It's 80 degrees though. I'm glad the air conditioning's on. Yeah. Way too hot for me. Yeah. Oh Anything yeah. Anything over 80 is too much for me. Yeah. I don't. I don't yeah. like. I don't like really hot either. Like not not that f- hot and and um no like less like the humidity. Oh, yeah. that's the worst. I'll be the first, but I'll be the first to bitch about it being cold. When it's true. Supposed, when it's supposed true. to. It's supposed to be warm now. But like 75, sunny, mm-hmm. no like minimal humidity. That's perfect. That's one of the reasons why I'm hesitant to stay over at my buddy's house because I'm like, what's the air conditioning situation like? Uh, it's time for air conditioning now. It is. We're not in the window yet. It's AC season. It's AC season. So what are you thinking about this? I'm thinking it's really fucking good. You like it? Yeah. Do you? It's very, there's no... I was worried that there was going to be a... Uh, like a weird taste? A bad aftertaste. Mm. You know how some drinks taste great in the beginning and then you, after you swallow it, it's like, okay, that's disgusting. That's what she said. <sighs> I knew you were going to say that at least once. That's all you. That's all you're allowed. Okay. That's all you're allowed. I'll try not. I'll try to curb I'll just, my. Or I'll just spend the next hour mm-hmm. saying, "Food fight twenty percent off code for." <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, settle down, settle <laughs> down, settle down. So this guy's hijacking my show. He's hijacking my advertisers. Trying I'm done to, doing trying to that. Steal my revenue. I'm done doing that. Jesus. I'm going to hear about it afterwards. You are. I am. Yeah. You're, you're getting written up. <laughs> so let me apologize on air, Bill, that I did that. Okay. Okay. Right. We, are we still friends? I think so. Okay. Good. For now. Good. <laughs> For now, yeah, <laughs> but this is really good, man. You, do, yeah, yeah, I good. would definitely recommend. Yeah, they have, they, they, have a, they have a few other flavors, uh, and they're 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 pretty good. The, but this one's definitely my favorite. I'm also a huge orange mm-hmm. flavor fan. Mm-hmm. I only actually drink this one is because I I love the flavor so much. Um, I think they have like three or four others. I kind of actually forget some of the other flavors. There's like a lemon something one. Ooh, a lemon probably be really it's, good. It's pretty good. It's it's not as good as this, at yeah. least in my opinion. Maybe you'll like it better. You should try it. Use code OTS. You'll get 20% I'll definitely off. use code OTS. Yep. Um, for that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> 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 you was very serious. Thank you. Uh, I was. Um, but yeah, no, man. It's, uh, it, is ref- it is refreshing. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. The air conditioning hitting my face right now is refreshing as well. Feels good, right? Yeah. Feels it's nice. nice. It's nice. It feels real nice. And yeah, it's man. amazing how big this building is on the inside. On the outside, it looks like you could fit a shoe in here. <laughs> it does. But then you it walk looks, inside. It looks like a shoe box. But right? you walk inside, it's like, where's all this space coming from? <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's, like like you, enter... it's like you went in a black hole <laughs> and it just got bigger. <laughs> it is. Dude, everybody says the same thing. You got four, you got like three or four huge rooms in here and it's just, it's incredible. Right? I would live in here if you let me live in here. I would live on the beanbag chair over there. I might, the let, I might let you. Um, I don't know if Kingston would would let me or would be okay with that. <clears throat> so you don't shovel you, know, the, you don't shovel your sidewalks in Kingston. So well, I did, but it just it took me like a little too long. Apparently, you got to be shoveled immediately. Bro. I know. Yeah, what a joke. Immediately. So you know how many tickets I got for parking on the street for the street cleaning? How when many? I lived in Kingston. How many? Three. I was up to fifty dollars fines. You all. You, well, you, I finally, you went to the next level. I argue the fifty dollars fine. I like, listen. I go. I one. I thought you were there earlier on. I thought I heard you there earlier on. It was three thirty. Parked in front of my house. Then you guys come at 3.30? That's what I understand. The sign says until 4. But I thought you were there already. I go, is there any way that you'll let me go with this? what they say? They did. Did they? It was nice. Mm. It was nice. They weren't nice to me. Mm. I'm not even going to go there. Um, we're moving out of Kingston, by the way. Do you know that? We are moving out of Kingston? We are. We don't, I don't know when. Okay. <clears throat> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it now so I can, we can manifest it together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm obs- well, I just moved out of Kingston. So it's time for you yeah, to move so I, 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 think, I don't like I think, the fact that I moved out of Kingston now. I like living I like living yeah, down this, you know, in this area. And, you know, and I don't mind it, except for yeah. the municipal people. Yeah. Uh, Yikes. But, uh, other, <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> shout out to the munis- municipality. I can't even say municipality. It's a big big word. Yeah, but keep the streets clean, though, at least. Oh, well, yeah. But don't, yeah, give, and, me a, and, don't yeah. give me a don't, don't give me a $15 fine having my car parked there. Bro. Yeah, come on. I mean, you guys, Kingston let... Remember coming off of Bennett... Remember last year? Coming off of Bennett Street, the one-way Bennett Street? Yeah. Where they, didn't, where they were doing the, that road construction for mm-hmm. like the summer. Excuse me. Well, they never, they never posted. That was some good ASMR. Yeah, I'm sorry. They never, they never painted the lines back on the road because you come up there, right lane turns right. Yep. The left lane goes straight to mm-hmm. the bank yep. or left, left goes on the Wyoming yeah. Avenue. When you have a car sitting in the right, now, you, now you, you drive past the sign that's far away from the red light that says right lane, but there's no paintings though. There's no, mm. there was no line painting at all. The amount of cars that went straight when it was supposed to go right that almost hit me over and over and over again. I had to go to the police station and complain about it, the Brill Building. Although, like, we don't, you're not the only person to complain. You know, Rainbow Jewelers, shout out to them. Uh, Rainbow Jewelers, they, um, they said that they were complaining about it. This and the, and the chief of police told me, he gave me a call back. 
It's respectful. He said, if we can't do anything about it right now, we need to be warm to paint the lines. I'm like, what about putting more signs out there? We can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do that? There's signs everywhere. <laughs> signs everywhere. So I complained. They complained. Um, I complained. I sent them emails and pictures of the video of the cars flying and almost trying to kill us, trying to kill people. The first warm day, they're out there spray painting the line. I don't Where know if you they? remember that. They're out there no. spray painting the lines. And then they finally put the official line. You can't have an intersection like that. No. With no lines painted for months and think, yeah. it's, and think it's acceptable. Dude, people don't know how to drive around here to begin with. Yeah, think, think it's acceptable. With, with lines, people don't know how to yeah. drive. If one of those cars smashed into me, I would have drove right to the police, right to the most of them, and be like, who's paying for this? Because I know my insurance isn't. Yeah. You guys are paying for this. this is, yeah, you, guys no are li- you, guys are, you guys are liable for this. How do you let yourself... You definitely... Now, I'm not a lawyer by any means, but I would think they'd be liable for that. I, when I went to the borough building, too... What the guy say to me? Oh, that's not our problem. That's, that's the company that did the construction. Mm. I'm like, okay, I hear you on that, but now it's your problem. Yeah, they left without it's a trickle down it. effect. It's still your, it's still your road. I don't think it's a state road. I think Wyoming Avenue is a state road, but I don't think Bennett Street's a state road. Mm-hmm. I go, you guys are responsible for this. This is in your, this is in your borough. This is in your town. We're your citizens, and you're putting us at risk. That's enough of that. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> you know, uh, two guys. Uh, two guys here, uh, you know, with ADHD or, or, um, you have ADHD, right? Oh yeah. I have, I have yeah. all kinds of ADHD. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. things gotta be perfect. Yeah. So yeah, know? we're, um, <clears throat> in certain, in most things, we're going to talk about one thing for 10 seconds and then switch, switch gears. So what, what we were really saying when we got, when we were saying, we're le- I was saying we were, le- we're leaving Kingston. Yeah. We, um, well, hopefully we're going to be leaving Kingston, not because of their crappy lines or my snow fines. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Kingston <laughs> is a very with all that yeah, saying, like Boston Bows, yeah. I loved yeah, when I, I moved do. here. I do. It's very nice. It's very clean. Uh, yeah. There's tons of small businesses everywhere. Yep. Um, I used to go. I used to walk around the whole town. Um, you know, some, especially this time of the year, walking, walking miles, and it's clean. It's nice. People are really nice. So that's why I'm sad. I moved. Yeah. I moved to Pittston. You know what I mean? I was. I'm an old Forge guy, but I'm moving yep. to Pittston now for a little while, and then going from there. But I, I'm going to miss living down here, like in the the heart of the valley. Yeah. Down yeah. Here, you know what I mean? <clears throat> well, hopefully, we'll um, as OTS grows. You know, over the next few months and plus several months, um, you know, we're uh, as we're growing and expanding, yes. we're running out of space here, mm-hmm. and uh, hopefully we will find a new building, a new That'd OTS HQ. That'd be really exciting in the near future. Don't know when, That'd be really but we're exciting. we're starting to look. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm putting that out there because I feel like a lot of times, a lot of things that we say, and just in general, not just the things I've said on this show. Uh, but you put stuff like that into the, out into the universe and it happens. Yeah. It I just agree. It happens. I agree. You, have to, you have to speak it. You have I to, agree. You know, you got to put the, you got to put the plan, a little bit of action, no matter what that action might be. Exactly. And, mm-hmm. the, and, and, and even if the first action is just saying it publicly yeah. and, and sort of putting it out there and letting people know your intentions, letting right. the universe know your intentions. Exactly. And then guess what? You just start, you then, you, then you take the next step because like once the hardest part with anything, I mean, not just this, what I'm saying, the hardest part with anything is just taking that first step. It Deci- is. Deciding like that's yeah. what I want to do, or we're gonna do this, or you know we're gonna go after this goal, we're gonna accomplish that. The hardest part is is actually just saying you're gonna do it, and literally putting yourself out there. Because most people, at least just for me, like I feel like a lot of times when I say things on a public stage, you know, I'll say whether it's social media or this or whatever, I then I think hold myself a little bit more accountable. People are waiting for you to do it. Yes, they might not say anything. Yes, but, but they're they like, oh, mem- like- remember when he said that? I know a lot of people who put their business out there. I never do anything. Sorry, I was taking a big oh, sip okay. of my, yeah. my, my that again? little can. 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 People are, dude, people are going to be so sick of hearing us talk oh, about yeah. can. After this episode, we're going to have to like never drink it again. <laughs> uh, but, but that's it, man. People put things out there. And the, one of the, you know, uh, the example that comes off the top of my head is, you know, the Food Fight podcast. Dude, you got to tell the story. Bro, we. In the parking lot. Absolutely. This is the, is the greatest story ever. Absolutely. So, um, it's so, it doesn't even feel real yet. It doesn't. Like, it's, it's, right? it's still, you're, I you're, se- you're several weeks, at, if not like a few months or more into this. And it, like, to me, it almost. We have eight sometimes. episodes recorded already. Yeah. No, we have more than eight episodes. Probably, oh, eight, more. The more eighth one's coming out this week. Yeah. We're, we're, you probably recorded like up to 12. Yeah, we got 12 or 13. 14. Then I have, we already reached in that 20 member, that 20 episode, yeah. that 20 episodes. And I, so, um, me and Bill, if anybody's signed on social media or not, me and Bill were at Wilkes University. Um, so this episode's coming up about, about a month from now. Yeah, so probably right about now, four weeks from now. Right now, it's just be, it's the beginning of May. I was just on the show a year ago. That's right. Episode right around 59. Now, 159. Or 159. Right? Oh my 159. God, listen, listen to me. Yeah, so 159. So it was literally like, 
it, this week. It was almost a year ago. A year ago. Yeah. So I started working at Good Tree MMA. It was Wilkesbury MMA at the time, but now mm-hmm. it's Good Tree MMA, Wilkesbury location, mm-hmm. down on Wilkesbury Township Boulevard. Reach out to me, free or stop by, take a free class, come join something that changed my life years ago. All mm-hmm. right. Um. So we, uh, uh. Her name was Margaret, right? Margaret, yeah, Mar- Margaret Petty. Margaret yeah. Petty. She reached out. Yeah, she out. saw your. So she, she saw, saw your, your episode. Yeah. and and you know, so somebody else, somebody else, like she was talking to somebody else at Wilkes that happened to know me, and um, I don't know how they made the connection somehow amongst each other, but Margaret talked to somebody else that knew me, and then that then then the other person in, introed uh, uh, Margaret to me in an email and said, hey, Margaret, you know, Margaret might be interested in having you know you do something. Well, I'll let her take it from here, and then she she emailed me back and said, hey. Bill, I saw your, I saw your episode with with Brian DiMatte, and I just happened to be scrolling on social media, and I came across it. And she's like, "I'm the you know the director of continuing learning here at Wilkes, and we have a, a pain and addiction summit, a yearly pain addiction summit that they do at Wilkes. That is a continuing education course for you know everybody you know in the in I'll say like the pain and addiction world from the the legal aspect, uh, you know, like with probation officers all the way up to doctors and physicians, it right. And, and, and prescribers yeah. and you know, all that. So, so she reached out to me and th- it was literally probably, I actually looked back to my email. I think it was like a month after your episode came out. Oh, was it really? So it, it was last okay. June. Okay. Yeah. So your episode I think came out in May. Okay. Then she emailed us. It was, she emailed me a month later and then I, I think I like text you or something. I was like, yo bro. You did. You came, you texted yeah. me. We were, we stayed in contact a little bit, yeah. but then you reached out to me for that. And I was like, yeah, man, that would be absolutely amazing. Not even really thinking about like where we're gonna be when we yeah. did when we shot. Yeah. That was yeah. so it was so far in advance. Yeah, because it was yeah, that was that was June of twenty twenty three. And then we were she's like she, she's like, like, the, the, you're, the like event you're like April. I'm like April of yeah, like, April, April 20, when? And you said you were like it already passed. And yeah, I'm like, like it's already passed <laughs> April. No, bro. I'm like, no, April twenty twenty four. I'm I'm like, I'm talking almost a whole nother a whole year from now. And yeah. you're like, Oh, okay, that makes yeah, yeah, more yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. And uh yeah, so then we we went, we set up a meeting with her to meet her on campus. We met her. And, at, we met her. I'll, at, let, I'll let you tell the rest of the yeah. story because the it, it I don't know, it's just kind of cool to me. One deal, I, I could so, seriously still picture the both of us standing in that parking lot the whole that day. day. Yeah, so we met at the parking lot, and then we met her at the coffee shop there on campus, and uh, no name drops at that coffee shop. So it's no Troy Street Coffee. It's no, it's no, it is it's absolutely not Troy yeah. Street Coffee. It was just there last week for the first. I had the bagel sandwich and the donuts. And they didn't yeah. have coffee yet, though. But I had the food. And uh, I'm going to get Ed on the show. Ed, shout out to Ed. We'll get you on here soon enough. Mm-hmm. All right, bro? Um, so we met in the coffee shop. And we're sitting there. And we met her and a few other people. She was with a few other people. Yeah, yep. And she was just explaining what the situation was, like how the summit goes all day long. Lawyers, doctors, pharmacists, everyone in that field. Uh, pain and addiction field they're coming in they're doing a, they have to be there for taking education credits and we kept it moving along and then she told us what we were, what we were going to do and it was instantly like yeah absolutely man yeah absolutely 100 percent. sign me up and the fact that we could do it that we were doing it together was really exciting so we yeah. got done with that put everything in place and like okay well, we're, i think it's, like, it's fucking not, not for another year so yeah, a, lot, yeah literally. a lot of time to get some information i don't even yeah. remember in a year you know what i mean yeah but then we go out. We, we walk out to the parking lot, and it was a very nice day. From it was what beautiful I remember, outside. it was like a, it was perfect too. It was wasn't beautiful it? outside. Yeah, that it wasn't day? too warm. wasn't too cold. It was, it was beautiful. Kind of like today. Yeah, because I don't think we met in June. Was it later in June? Was it in the summer when we met? It, I feel like it was later in the summer, Bill. Because like, it might it was, have been. It was a. It, it was been. a. It was like um. It might have been not the best time for a day like that. Whenever it was. Yeah. We could probably go back and look. Mm, yeah. Whenever it was. But anyway, but then, we were standing in the parking. Standing lot. in the parking lot, and uh. I don't remember. Exactly. You brought you brought. I, I know what it was. You, you brought up Will's show. You're like, Yo, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started. You're yeah. like, hey, so I saw that uh, that guy, that Doctor Will Remy, that you had on your show like a long time. Because I messaged him before I even brought it up to you. I messaged him like, Will, I go because he started liking my stuff. Yeah. And I was like, Will, I go, are you? I see you're doing you, something. Are you cool. doing? Are you doing the show with Bill? Like, how's that working out? And he explained a little bit to me, and then that was it. Yeah. And then we had our meeting, and then we were in the parking lot. Go ahead. You guys, I remember part. You probably remember more of it than I do. I don't, yeah. I remember that well, yeah, part. Yeah. I just remember the first thing you said were like, hey, like, so I saw Will's doing that show. Like, and what you, uh, and I think you were like, I, I think we I built like, out that I, other studio. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, we just built out a second studio in the building. I was like, yeah, we're looking to expand shows and to like do, we're looking to expand, I'll say like our our network of in house shows, and we call them on the Stacks Originals. Yeah. I think I literally said, oh man, I would love to do a food fight podcast. With yeah. My food and, you're, page. and you're like, how's that work? And I'm yeah. like, I'm Get like, right well, it. I'm like, you know, 
I'm like, honestly, I'm like, I'm like, you know, Will and you know, he won't mind me saying this, um, but Will was like the guinea pig. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he was like, he was the very first one we did. Yeah. Show's still going on, by the way. Shout mm-hmm. out Leadership to Code. Oh, I love see it. The, oh, it's fantastic. See the sign right over here, you know? <clears throat> Tell you what, if you got 15 minutes every week, which we all do. Yeah. And you just want to educate yourself and motivate yourself and get some, a different perspective on pretty much anything that you're doing. And you don't need to be a leader. That's no, you don't. Thing. No, you just, it, it's just. It's helpful. In I even, everyday life. I don't even think about that when I'm listening to podcasts. Like, oh, I have to be a leader for this. And yeah, I, but a I, lot of people do. That's why I right, say that. A lot of people right, think like, great. oh, well, that's, like, that, that's not me. But it's like, it doesn't need to be. It's a really good point. And just the stuff he talks about is like, wow. And Will has been helping me, you know, off of that, like personally yeah. with like my jujitsu and just life in general. Yeah. And it's just such a different perspective of looking at things and going in and in in approaching things. It's absolutely amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm glad things are working out for Will on there, you know? Yeah. Um. So I said, oh yeah, I'd love to do a, a podcast for this. Yeah, and you're like, and what's and that were, look like? And, and you were like, just immediately just whoom, yeah. right into it. And next thing I know, we're bullshitting about that. Mm-hmm. I get in the car and I'm home. I'm like, that would be really, really cool. Not even thinking that it, it was gonna happen. it was gonna happen. Yeah, you're like, oh, and, that'd be cool. You told me, Cause you told me branching out into the new year. Yeah, I was like, okay. So I, 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 wish I, remember when, yeah. I wish I fucking remember when it was June, July. Was it maybe some, maybe was it maybe September? It might, it might have been early. It might have been early fall. Yeah, I think it was early because it was like I said, it was it was unseasonally beautiful outside. Yeah. I had a tank top I, I and shorts. It, I think on, it I was think. early yeah. fall. Yeah. So next thing I know is you text me a few days later, like let's get let's get this thing rolling, and I'm like. Okay. Yeah, we're like, hey, let's talk about. Okay. This. Let's, like, let's, I come down. Let's actually talk about. I come it. down, have a meeting with you and Jimmy. Yep. And yo, here we are. The rest is history, bro. The rest is history, man. Crazy. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely amazing. And the feedback has been tremendous lately. You know, what I mean, people be coming up to me. Uh, hey, food fight. Hey, food fight. Food fight. Hey, yeah. you know, I, I love what you do for the area. All that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And and I'm not gonna beat a dead horse into the ground, but the amount of people who come up to me or business people who message me saying. We appreciate what you guys like you and Jim and from any PA Pizza Review and a few other people do in the area by not blasting the places that you go to because you don't know how bad that hurts small businesses when we hear negative stuff about our place. And that's why I, and that's why I do what I do. And I'm not, I'm not about that. I'm not going to get into it. I've said it too many times on my own show and yep. your show. You know what I mean? But yeah. people, people, people think I'm bullshitting my reviews. And it's just, that's just nonsense. Yeah. It's nonsense. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to post a negative review. And I'm not going to post a bullshit. I'm not going to lie about something I eat. And it's not. Listen, I like most food. Yeah. It doesn't take a lot to impress me when it comes to food. You know what I mean? Oh, pizza, maybe a little different. I could be I'm not a pizza snob, but there's some shitty pizza in the area. And I just don't, I just don't go back there. You're just not going to talk about it. Yeah. That's it. And there were times where I had shitty pizza from a place. I went back and tried it again, which I normally do. And it was good. So you have an off day. Mm-hmm. You open Old Forge, man. There was there's been times in Old Forge on a Friday night where the pizza didn't come out right. Am I gonna cl- am I gonna shop close the place up because I never went there? Yeah, I went there a hundred times. Write them off because of it. I have one bad pizza over a hundred times. I'm gonna go back and do it again. I'm currently doing my Old Forge pizza tour, and we had Russ Rinaldi on the episode. He told the whole story of Old Forge pizza. The episode was fantastic. Yeah, it was the best. I need I need I need Russ a, is the best. I need a whole day to talk. Yeah. So have 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 him on the show again. You know what I mean? You should have him. You should have him on your show. I should. Yeah. That would be. I, uh, I think I need. I to. think that would be a really good guest to have yeah. on the show. Um, could touch on all that, and mm-hmm. um, I know he wouldn't mind telling his sobriety story. He's he's really out there, and it's, he's been oh, I didn't t- know that for like thirteen years. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, shout out to Russ. Mm-hmm. Yep. So let's go back into. Uh, we just did that. We just did the uh, the pain and addiction summit at Wilkes. Yep. Finally came. The date finally came. I got, yeah. I got to a point where I was forgetting. <laughs> my beard is going into my nose, man. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. I for, forgot to for, uh, hair yeah, and makeup uh, was late. They were was, late. Yeah. They were late on their way in. There was so. there was a time where I was like, "What is this? I have a, I have jujitsu tournaments coming up in April, so I can't do anything on that Friday. I have to do these. I, I couldn't wait to do it." And mm-hmm. um, I used to tell my story a lot at AA meetings. I used to go up to Clearbrook and tell my story, other places, and tell my story for years. Um, but that's when I was stone cold sober. I'm not sober anymore because I smoke pot. All right. And I'm not going to sit around and say, oh, I'm sober and hide it from people. I'm, I'm, right. I'm open about it. Yep. But I'm sober off of the stuff that ruined my life and put me on the track I'm on now. Um, yeah, it's it's my, a big difference. It's, it's, big my, difference. it's my sobriety, the way I do it. It works for me. I would recommend anyone try, go to AA. If you're trying to get sober, the number one suggestion I would say is go to AA. Go there for, go there for a while until you start getting better and then make your own judgment from that. Some people do it 
been, been in there for 20, 30 years. That's their thing. That's their sobriety. That's their story. That's their path. Yep. This is the path I'm on now. And, um, you know, I'll be 43 soon. And do I have regrets about my past life? Sure, I have regrets, but it made me into the person I'm in here now. I think the last time I said something on the show, I don't know if I'd be here right now. No, you if wouldn't I didn't have that life. No, you it would wouldn't. be a whole different project. I might have the I might have the most boring fucking life in the world. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I might have a dead end job somewhere with a house and or dead. whatever, or dead, or dead, or dead. You know, or yeah. dead. I'm lucky to be here, and I'm 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 grateful to be here. Yeah, cheers to that. Cheers, man. man. Cheers to that. I'm grateful for the opportunities that you gave me, Bill, with the podcast and everything like that. I love working with you guys. It's it's exciting. It's not work. Yeah, I come I, in here. Do I say I say that too? I come in here and I schmooze the guest, and we bullshit, we laugh, we take pictures. If I remember to take pictures, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then and then we shoot the podcast. And I remember the first epi- when I when we recorded the first episode with Jim. Yeah, sorry about that small table, Jim. <laughs> you see his comment? <laughs> yeah, you see his comment. I see you guys upgraded the table. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. We both messed up oh the table God. order. Yeah, it, it, it was the well, point you know, it's, where it's one of those things. I want to say this. it's yeah. one of those things that this is. These are the things that hold people back from actually creating. Okay, it, had we have waited till that we had the perfect table. Now, Grant, I think we had it maybe within a couple weeks. It was the next week, right? But be, but because like but because we were like, oh shit, okay, let's change that. But these are the things that like like sometimes it's something as little as that. I know it sounds little, right? But sometimes some something as little as that. May hold somebody back from starting a podcast. You know oh, why? This, because they th- they they might say, "Oh, well, it's not perfect. Oh, it's not the best thing yet." Well, so what? Yeah, it doesn't need to be. I agree. You know, so at the time, you know, we had the first episode. We're like, you know what? Screw it. We don't have another table yet. We're just gonna roll with what we have. And it, you know, it worked. You messaged me that board. Do you have a table? Yeah. I'm like, no. I'm like, okay. Or, well, it, it might have been the day before. I think it was the day before. Yeah. I was at Walmart. I was like, not on the tables. I went to the top. I, uh, I was like, I, all right, we got to use the small one. I then. went to the table aisle. And yeah. all they had were the big folding. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's terrible. So yeah. the Buffalo I just said, Bills. I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? Bill will take care of it. We get here, we stare at each other, like, we'll just have to use that table. Yep. And that was yeah. it. And that was it. And it and it worked. And, it worked. and, you know, and, and guess like, what? Me and Jim were like this sitting at the yeah. table. And but now it guess worked. what? It makes for a good story. It makes for a good story. It's funny. Mm-hmm. We're gonna laugh about it forever. Yeah. Just Jim's you know? comment alone. Oh my god! I see you upgraded the table. Yeah, I love it. So Jim, we'll have you. Jim, you'll be coming back on. We gotta do it right. We got. You'll be coming back onto the big table. And I won't make you eat crackers anymore. Yeah, you, you guys were at the kids' table. Yeah, I challenge. You I mean, need to do more food challenges. We did. You're, you're so right. You need to do more. You're so right. You're so right. At first, when when you first told me you wanted to do that on some of the shows, at first I was like, ah, I don't know. I was like, either either that could like hijack the show and take way too long, mm-hmm. or I was just like, I don't know if that will really work. But you know, what? I really enjoyed it. It was funny. And I, you know, even though I, even though at first I kind of like second guessed. Obviously, I loved it. It was hilarious. It was great. Yeah. Um, but like, I think you should do more of them. Like whatever it is, and even and you know even maybe even if it's not even a food challenge, what just just even just getting something and trying it on the show with a guest. No, I agree. Anything it doesn't I even agree. have to be related to them. I like agree. like us right now. Like literally, we just got these. Mm-hmm. You've never had them before. I was like, yo, I got these. Let's try them. I've been I, waiting. I was like, I was I've like, been waiting I'm, days for you to bring them down to the studio. He, uh, Brian has been begging me for <laughs> more more than days. By the way, he's been begging me for these more ones than, are only for show. Oh, only yes. for show. Yep, I'm like, yeah. let's crack them open, <laughs> motherfucker. Let's fucking drink them. Yeah. So Brian has literally been bugging me for like weeks to try these, and I just kept forgetting to bring them here to the studio because I I hoard them at home because they're yeah. so good. On the stacks, we'll be back in a flash after a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Elevation Wellness, NEPA's premier wellness center located on Monday Street in Wilkesbury. From pro athletes to busy parents, Elevation Wellness is leading the conversation when it comes to bettering your health through integrative medicine. Founded by NEPA native Louis Helmecki, Elevation Wellness offers physician-formulated and guided treatments that are administered by registered nurses. To learn more about how you can experience the benefits of IV vitamin therapy, multivitamin booster shots, non-invasive aesthetics, or peptide, NAD, red light, and compression therapy, Visit elevation-wellness.com or follow them on Instagram at elevationwellnessnepa. All on the Stacks listeners will receive 10% off their first purchase with code STACKS at checkout. Call 570-762-9400 or visit elevation-wellness.com to book your appointment today. Elevation Wellness, taking your health to new heights. A lot of times when people are in car accidents, kind of forget what we should do. First and foremost, call 911. Then, get out of your car before moving it and take pictures. It's so important to capture what the cars look like immediately following the accident. 
Finally, call your insurance carrier and make a claim. To learn more, visit Anza Loan Law Offices online at anzalonelaw.com. This episode is brought to you by Loop Internet. Are you tired of buffering, lagging, and slow internet speeds? Look no further. Introducing Loop Internet, Northeastern Pennsylvania's fastest and most reliable internet service provider. With Loop Internet, you can stream, game, and work from home seamlessly. Say goodbye to interruptions and hello to lightning fast connections. Loop Internet offers both residential and business fiber. Fast track the future with their 10 gigabyte fiber and join the Loop Internet family today. Visit Loop Internet online at loopinternet.com or call 1 888 808 5667. Again, that's 1 888 808 5667. Or visit them online at loopinternet.com. Loop Internet, where speed meets reliability. And now we're back on the stacks. Uh, I'm, affiliate, I'm, a, I'm in the affiliated program with them, with them. I didn't even try yeah. them before. I'm like, Bill, I got to try these. You, you right. need to give me a couple, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but it's, it's one of these things I want to, I was like, I want, I want to wait until we're on the show yeah. and I want to get your honest, no, it was really good. genuine mm-hmm. feedback from it because, you know, again, like sometimes people will think that it's staged or is it staged that we have these on here? Yes, yeah. but the, but you trying it for the first time was real. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I, we intentionally brought these on mm-hmm. right today for you to try yeah. them, but it was for you to try yeah. it. You put me on the spot. I'm yeah. going to give you my honest opinion about the food. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't lie about my reviews. I don't want to, I can't, I can't say that enough. Why would I lie about food I like? Yeah. I just, there's no need for it. Yeah. There's no need for it. Right. You know, there's no need for it. Yeah. Like I said, I paid too much money for that cookie from Wegmans the other night, $4 and 62 cents. Then you, you for a double, <laughs> for a double chocolate chip cookie with the, with the chocolate in the middle of it. That was about 8.30 I made the post after I bought it because it was a $5 cookie. Mm-hmm. Then at midnight, I ate it. That was it. I had to make, I had to apologize. You did, and you did. I'm going to get, I'm going to get one of those tonight. And you know, I think that's so important as a content creator, <laughs> whether you make a statement, good or bad, and it's something, eh, not that this was bad, not that you said anything like out of line, right? It's, but like It was overpriced. But, but, you, but you made a statement, right? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and I think the fact that you then came back to your page shows how, how genuine you are because... You know, you admitted like, "Hey, I was wrong," and that that cookie was worth every penny. Yeah, every penny. Yeah, I post pictures of you know Burger King chicken sandwiches or Burger King whoppers. People rip into me; it's hysterical. <laughs> oh, it's trash. Listen, I know it's fast food. Yeah, but that whopper is better than most of the burgers that you could buy in a restaurant area. It's just this. It just it just tastes better. I hate, I mean, to, hate to say that. Yeah, I hate to say it. Yeah, but it, like, you give me a double bacon whopper. People are like, "Oh, go to a mom and pop shop." Well, it's ten o'clock at night. Where can I get a double bacon burger immediately yeah. after, pra- after after comp practice on Monday night? Nowhere. Nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm sure I can get it somewhere, yeah. but I don't want to go anywhere. I'm filthy, sweaty. I just got done doing an hour and a half of jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to go into a restaurant even to pick up food because, no, I don't yeah. want to do that. You know? Yep. But these were really good. Definitely recommend them. Yeah. Definitely recommend them. Wish we had some more, but, you know. Um, I only brought, I, and it's funny because I literally only brought it enough in for you to try, which was just this. That's perfect, though. This measly. Can. I just need a case, please. I use, use my I use, use my code, code OTS. Yeah, use code use code I'll OTS. Use my code OTS. Yeah, and like, I'll send you the bill as well. All right. Does that sound good? Maybe you get twenty percent off. You oh well, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> then I get to drink them with you. <laughs> you do. That's the yeah, you do. That's the catch. They could be that could be a community. I'll buy. How about this? OTS will buy a community case. That sounds for good. the studio. That sounds good. With our own code. Did I change? Was my that's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, because we know everyone listening and watching is not going to yes. use it, so we're just going to have to that's just perfect. buy, just keep buying amongst ourselves. And use was our my own code. food was my food page Dimitri's food fight last time I was on here? I think it was because it uh, wasn't always it wasn't always the I'm, name. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was. I'm like too. yes, I'm, I'm like 99 sure. Yeah, I'm I don't, sure I don't even too. know what it was before that. It was How's called that? it was called Dimitri's NEPA food review. Nope. I don't remember that. So it's too no. much. Nope. It's too much. That was a lot. Yeah. That, was a big, that was a mouthful right, right yes. there. Yes. Yes. So we had the conversation in the park. So we'll go back to our original topic yeah. after we got derailed yeah. for about a couple Woo. seconds, you know, had a conversation in the parking lot. We should send this in for ADHD yeah. research. <laughs> you reached out to me a couple of days later. Let's get it going. We had a meeting with Jimmy. You guys, I came down here. You guys explained to me how it all works. And that was the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. It, it happens so fast, and you created this. I remember when you sent me this. Yeah, and Look at the that. first time it was the octagon. It looked all right, but yeah. but not right. because 
People would have known what it was. Yes. But you sent me this first too. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, I love like that. I better. love the ring. And you do people do MMA in a ring anyway. You yeah. know, like one does it in the ring, you know what I mean? Everyone yep. does it in the ring. Um it's perfect. Mm-hmm. I love the colors. You know what I mean? You've been yelling yeah. at you've been you've been giving me the shit about my my uh my captions and my videos. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put blue and gold captions branding. for all forge, bro. Branding. Blue and, is, is branding the blue and gold's all forge colors. All right, I can respect that. All right, that's cool. I respect that. I was telling Will this the other day. It was like you, you, it was, we're pretty much telling Shane you need some uh creative I go, I need some creative relaxation for Bill. He's up <laughs> he's on my ass. It was a great conversation. <laughs> I love it because we're doing because you showed me how to do yeah uh, the setup with, with the podcast and everything. I'm like, I go, I go, Will, I go, Bill's breaking my balls about my about my captions. He goes, he wants everything to be fresh. I don't, I don't know. He's not wrong at all, but he's breaking my balls about it. Yeah. So now, sorry, we all break each other's yeah. balls. So now though. I have like I get my caption anxiety when I make it my reels. Now I'm like, is Bill gonna like this <laughs> yeah. now? It's yeah. So funny. Caption, I love it. Ca- caption I anxiety. I absolutely, I absolutely yeah, you love have caption it. PTSD. <laughs> sorry, I gave you caption PTSD. Yeah, you, right? did, you did. Sorry. You did. You <laughs> did. Uh, no man like I, i'm i'm you know all, oh, all, all joking aside like i'm 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 uh I'm, I'm just like you said like you're grateful to be here i'm grateful you're here i appreciate that um i recently you know, told you that yeah. i want to do some more one on the stacks yeah love to have a bigger role here yeah and uh i'm grateful to you have the job at good tree mma where it allows me um freedom to do other things you know what i mean and uh i get to train jiu-jitsu all day long you know and i was here last year I just started working at Good Tree MMA, but mm-hmm. I spent six months. I left the job at the casino. Did I talk about that? I think I definitely, I definitely talked about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, definitely yeah. talked about that. Like, yeah. left the job at the yep. casino, and I've been going there the last week or so because I'm staying up the street from there. Yeah. And I've been playing a little craps here or there. I think I'm even for the whole time I've been playing. I, I just like, I love the atmosphere of the casino. Not when I was working there, just being in there in general. Mm-hmm. And then seeing all my old friends at night shift, everything like that, seeing with them playing. But then I see the players why I left some of these and you're like Whoa. some of these players and well they've been I mean th- there's times where I won't play crafts because they're on, on, on the table mm-hmm. but if, only, if there's one side of the table where it's come cool not all the guests were bad but most of them were um, you see the same person every day and they're miserable and you add in alcohol and losing money and they're not nice people to begin with man it's, it's, it, it, it beats you down every day yeah. it beats you down every day and uh, there's some people that I'll come in there I don't look for trouble but a couple of the players just come out and say something to me. Oh, you don't work here no more? I'm like, no, I've worked here in a year and a half. And then they'll make another comment. I'll be like, you're the reason why I fucking left here. This older guy, real asshole, told me the other night, oh, can't you just be quiet? People are playing craps. Put your money down if you want to talk. And I looked at him. I'm talking, and then he goes to Brad, the dealer. Brad's like, bro, he's a, he's a player. He's not a, doesn't work here anymore. He's a guest. And I said to him, I go, bro, I would never play craps next to you. You know, I don't want my money. <laughs> Anywhere near your money. I go, you are one of the biggest assholes that I ever dealt to in my entire life. And he goes, what are you, what are you doing now? I go, I put him, I, go, oh, I, I see, see somebody, oh, you got a real job. I'm like, I go, well, a dealer's not a real job? I go, they're not doing a real job? And like, he's he like, can I shut up? He goes, dealing crap is one of the hardest things you'll ever do in your life. Yeah, I can never do it. And people think that it's not a providing a service. Like, these, people, these, these are players that don't tip. Oh, of course. Of course. You didn't Listen, have to man, say that. Could, I knew, I knew yeah, that before yeah. you even said that. There were, there, were, there were asshole players, but they tipped a lot. So you deal with them. Mm-hmm. So on the craps table, players that are not cool, they like, make you work more than you need to, they're called strokers. Okay, there's so, nicknames here. So, okay. the best, so the best example, now people listening, if you play craps, more than likely, some of you are strokers. A stroker on the craps table is, so Bill, you're my dealer right now, I'm okay. the player. Okay. Uh, Bill, give me a $10 10. You might you play craps before? No. You might not know what I'm talking about. That's fine. Okay. But so give me ten dollar ten. Okay. Oh, you know, give me ten dollar five. Give me ten dollar nine. Give me ten dollars. Give me twelve dollar six. Give me twelve dollar eight. Give me ten dollar nine. Fifty four across. You mean so? There's terms for there's terms for craps. Now, when you first start when you first start playing, you're not gonna know the terms. But these are seasoned players that they yep. know what they're doing. Yeah. So they're making the bet all at once. They make a bet singly. That's a stroker. Okay. Pick my put my bet on. Pick my bet off. Pick my bet on. Pick my bet off. Move it there. Move it there. Constantly, always doing something. Every single fucking roll <laughs> that drives you crazy. Yeah. And you're not a tipper. You Ooh. are a you are a stroker. Now, there's tipping strokers. We don't call them strokers. We call them tippers. Tippers. I'll do whatever you want, bro. There's players that will up their bet every play, um, move down, move this, move that, but they're tipping me every play. Man, I want to deal with these people. I want them to do good. You know what I mean? But don't be a, don't be a stroker on the yeah. crab table if you're not a tipper. Tip. Yeah. Tip. Tip while you're playing. 
Yeah. Go tip at the end. Tip while you're playing. The dealers work hard. How do you feel about tipping in the restaurant business? I know, I know. We, uh, I feel like we, you had a little rant on this not long ago. Yeah, I feel like it's been, something, something you're I've passionate ran, about. I've ranted on a few other people's pages. Yeah, and sometimes I don't get responses. You know what I mean? Um, I'm a huge. I mean, listen, you go out to a restaurant. You'd make the decision to leave your house, to not cook, not make a mess. You make the decision to go to a restaurant. And have Bill wait on you, right? So Bill's our server. On the server. Bill, he's, he's, he used to be, he was the dealer and now he's the server, okay? Yep, yep. So I go to Bill, I go to on, the On The Stacks restaurant, all right? Cooked by Food Fight. And I sit down at the table, a family of two or a family of three, whatever. And Bill brings me, he comes over, greets me, he's real nice. Brings me drinks, refills my drinks, appetizers, takes away the plate dinners, everything, desserts, clears everything away, puts everything in front of me, brings me extra silverware, brings me extra ketchup, whatever I want. He's literally waiting on me. He's serving me dinner. I get the bill, whatever it is, and I don't tip him. He, people don't tip because, oh, the restaurant should pay them. Like they're providing you a legitimate service where they're waiting on you hand and foot because you made the decision to go there. Don't blame the restaurant you blame the state, if anybody, for paying the service two eighty three an hour. But that's the, we have tipping culture in this country, and that's, a, and that's it. Don't compare it to any other country. It is what it is. Yeah, if you don't like it, go live somewhere else. So I supported myself on tips for years and years and years, and I make great money doing it. A lot of people get stuck in those business because they make really good yeah, you money. Yeah, can't, can't get out. Right. So you don't think, so you pay your bills 100 bucks. You don't think that's worth 20, a $20 bill for that person literally taking care of you, making sure everything's perfect. Listen, if the food's shitty or the service, listen, more importantly, if the service is shitty, don't tip. I don't, listen, I go in the restaurant, I probably tip about 30% right from the start. But that can either go up or down depending on the service. Mm. I'm not saying tip no matter what. You tip for good service. You don't tip someone that's ignoring, ignoring you or doesn't come back to your food. Servers and waitresses and bartenders, you drop food, you drop a food in front of the, your customer, Go back there in two minutes, make sure everything is right. Don't let them sit there with overcooked steak, undercooked burger, cold french fries, because that's going to affect that's your tip. That's the worst. If you drop a burger in front of me, and it's cold, and I don't see you for 20 minutes, you're done. You're not going to get a good tip. Yeah, you're done. You're not going to get a good tip, because you're not giving me the service that I come there for. You know what I mean? Does that make so? There's 100%. Two, it's a two-edged story. I'm not saying tip just to tip. Absolutely not. No. Now, you got these, you got you got all the other businesses that want tips now. Oh yeah. How I do you, to, uh, oh, yeah, I think yeah. this might be it. How do you feel about when you're, when you go to a place where you're, you, you go in, you order your food at a counter and you walk out the door at the counter or go to your seat with the counter, but it's all, it's all self-serve, right? You just order, they hand you the food across the table. It's essentially, think of it like, the, I'm going to use McDonald's as an example. Yeah, just so a perfect example. Else, okay. Yep. Except McDonald's, they don't ask for tips on the screen, I don't think. I'm right? surprised they don't. I'm surprised they don't. Yeah. But like another, a, a restaurant that... You know, I'm saying it's not fast food, mm -hmm. but a same the same um, uh, idea where you go in, you order the food at a re at a register with a, with a yep. person, you pay them the money, then they give you your food and you take it to the table, you eat you eat it, and then you take your tray you or whatever it, it is and you throw it away yourself. Yeah. How do you feel about the thing that comes up on the screen right now? I don't like credit it. card if you need, you need I don't, a tip. I don't I don't like that. I don't mind a little now. I don't frequent the coffee places around the area a lot, Dunkin' Donuts, Bucks, all those places, right? Mm -hmm. But they always have a jar or a tip. Oh, see, coming in the food business, if I walk in there and I see the guy making me a really good latte, um, I know they share tips. I want the guy making the latte to they have, they have a dollar, but they share it to the whole staff. I'm going to tip a dollar in the... Uh, in the barista because like baristas, that's a, that's a service, they're providing me a service, they're making me really good coffee. Mm -hmm. So I'll give them a dollar. Yeah. I don't go there a lot anyway, right? But I, I go to these local hoagie places, these chain these chain hoagie places somewhere around the area, right? Jersey Mike's, Primo's, places like that. They turn the screen around. They want a tip. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not doing yeah. it. I'm not doing it. I, yeah. I, I'm just not doing it. Uh, I don't I, agree. I, I can't. I, I agree with I, you. I can't. Yeah. I, what am I, I, was at the, I was at the airport. I was it's like, like, why? Like, wh like why, t why tip? When I was flying right? to Florida, I just paid, I paid $9 for two bottles of water at the store before we got on the flight. She has a basket off for a tip. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. Don't charge me so much for the water. I'll give you a tip. I just paid $9 for two bottles of water. I got yeah. robbed. Yeah, totally. And you robbery. want a tip for sitting near the register? I'm just not going to do Even that. Even I don't charge you for the bottle of water here. I yell at you for it. Yeah, it's worse. But at least I, rather, I, I still I rather, give it to you, right? I'd rather pay for it and not get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> anxiety. Yeah. You have water anxiety and, yeah. um, and but it's just doesn't make, anxiety. But it doesn't make any sense. Um, tip this person. Tip. Well, they're making 20 
they're making fifteen twenty dollars an hour. Servers aren't now. On the flip side, so many people have been posting a lot lately. Um, if you paid servers a livable wage, we wouldn't have to tip them. Okay, so let's 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 yeah. let's get into that for a second. Okay, you're gonna pay a server fifteen. So you pay for, you pay someone fifteen dollars an hour, forty hours a week, thirty two five a year. All right, you can't live in that. You can't. That's good for a second income for a family, uh, the supplement. But you're not you're not renting an apartment. On that. I'm looking for apartments now, man. It's too grand just to, just to open, just to get the key. Crazy. Maybe. You know what I mean? And uh, So you're going to pay a server 15, let's just say $20 an hour. All right? So, Bill, I'm going to take you off the tips. All right? We're putting, we're, no one's going to tip you anymore. I'm going to pay you 20 bucks an hour, and you're going to get a paycheck at the end of the month, and then the week. All right? So you, you're going to go from making two, 250 a night in cash tips to making 160 for an eight-hour shift. In a check. Before, with, yeah. before taxes. Yeah. All right. So no matter what you do, no matter how you treat me as your guest, you're still making $20 an hour and no tips. Okay? So what do you think is going to happen? What's the first thing that's going to happen? Uh, that all those people are going to quit. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's going to be people that a seasoned servers are going to quit. But I was thinking more than long like the service is going to oh, all the, oh, the service is going to plummet. But people, people will quit, though. Yeah, people will quit. Because you know why? Because waiting on tables and bartending and busing and all that shit, it's not worth $20 an hour. No. It's not worth – it's a very hard, demanding job on the body. You work terrible hours. You work holidays. Mentally. And you deal with people's shit. And yeah, mentally. All the yeah. time. Most people are nice, but it only takes one piece of shit to ruin your day and fire you up. All right? And you're going to do that for $15, $20 an hour? Fuck that shit, no man. Way. Put me in the office for $20 an hour. Put me in a warehouse for twenty dollars an hour. If I had to choose, I worked in a warehouse before. I would rather wait on tables for twenty dollars an hour than work in a warehouse for twenty dollars an hour. If I had to choose, if I had to choose, okay, okay. all right, because working in a warehouse is not fun. Yeah, it's not fun. God bless everyone that works in there. You're hustling. Keep it up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I just did it before. It wasn't for me. But you're not going to pay a, tw- a servers and bartenders who are seasoned. You might be able to hire somebody brand new who never did it before, but they're going to turn into be like this is terrible. Oh yeah, but the service is going to lack. Yeah, and because people, and they're not going to care because everyone. I've never worked in the restaurant industry, but I, I mean, I worked at Dunkin' Donuts. I don't, I don't know if that counts. That's fast. I was like, I was, I was sixteen. It's probably crazy. Um, but you know, again, just you know, from from you know my my perspective, uh, you know, working, you know, someone being in the restaurant business, like those people, they thrive and live, and the, the tips is everything, right? And like they're there because they know if they do a good job, they're going to get paid more, and that's it. And yeah. that's why they're there. And if and if and if that goes away, like, oh hey, oh you're not going to pay me anymore for for providing good service and dealing with people's shit. Well, then it's not for me. No, exactly, exactly. So you get someone that's making. I was make. I used to make a thousand dollars a week in cash waiting on tables. If you knock that down in half and give me a paycheck, fuck that shit. I ain't Forget doing it. it. Yeah. It, what what brings me back the next? What I just got done working twelve hour shift. What brings me back to work another twelve hour shift the next day is the money in my pocket. The cash in my pocket. You have $200 in your pocket. It's a hard job, but you have two, $300 in cash in your pocket at the night. It makes it worth it. It's mm-hmm. worth it. It's yeah. worth it. Even though, you don't, even though you don't have time to spend it. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah. that's, that's, and then people, people are actually naive enough to think, oh, you don't have to raise the food costs. Who's paying these, who's paying these people? Yeah. There's already, a, there's already a thin margin of profit in the restaurant business to begin with. Now you're going to go from paying an employee, let's say five bucks an hour. Now you're paying them twenty dollars an hour. It's three times the amount you were just paying. That's impossible. Who's paying for that? We're paying for that. Right. My fifteen dollar cheeseburger is now seventeen fifty. Yeah, at least, if not more. Buy more. And people think that there's not going to raise food cost. You out of your mind? You're just you're gonna you're gonna get shit service, and you're not going to and you're gonna pay more. Yeah. You want you want a soda refill? Good luck. Because you know where I am. I'm in the kitchen bullshit. I'm going for a smoke. I used to smoke cigarettes when I worked in the restaurant business. <laughs> if I'm getting paid a flat rate, for a smoke. I'm getting paid a flat rate, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. I'll be back. <laughs> and you're going to smell me. All right? Yeah. I didn't smoke until after everyone left. You know what I mean? But if you're paying me flat rate, I'm going I'm I'm to smoke. smoke in between. I'm going to go smoke. Every, probably, in between every refill. I might even eat some of your soup. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. At your table. Yeah. Actually, I might just, sit down. I might just sit down and have some of your while soup. While you go like, to the I bathroom. Don't care because you're not going to tip me anyway. Yeah, while they go to the bathroom, you're sitting down and just, yeah. you know. Eating the soup. But you're not going to stop people from tipping, though, either. No. Even if you know they're getting paid 20 bucks an hour, they're still waiting on you. I'm going to tip you. 
going to tip you. Yeah. They just raised the minimum wage in California for fast food workers to uh, 15 or $20. I think it was $20 an hour. Mm. So you know, you know what the fast food businesses did? They laid off. They cut hours. They raised their food prices to, to offset that. Did the, did the government think that they were going to eat that? Yeah, no way. They gotta do, they're a business. They got to do what they got to do. Right. They got to do what they got to do. So now you're... Now everyone's paying for more, paying more for stuff now. Fucking backfired big time. Oh yeah, backfired, backfired, yeah. backfired big time, man. Is the McDonald's job or Burger King job worth twenty dollars an hour? I don't know. I never did it before. It might, it might be. Fifteen an hour sounds about right, in my opinion. Fifteen hours Probably. an hour, right? You know, considering how much they charge for everything now. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Number one's like ten bucks. You know crazy. what I mean? Absolutely crazy, bro. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. So you just came across your 200th episode. We did. For On The Stacks. Yeah. Crazy, man. That is crazy. It's crazy. How many years is that? How many years is that? Well, so it's it's four years with the show, but yeah. five years with the brand. So I okay. started the brand, at a, you know, more, I won't even get into the story because I've told it too many times, but, you know, one year of no podcast, but just the brand, and then four well, years. Four years. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, you do. The, the, the year without the, without the show? Yeah. What'd you do? It was just, well, it was just, the, remember the pictures that on the stacks, on the actual pallets of paper? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I used to do just that. So just I think- pictures of, pictures of you sitting on paper? Yeah, with, with a guest. Oh, okay. And no podcast. All I would do was take a picture, you know, there's a picture of me and you. Yeah. Sitting on the, sitting on the pallets of paper, and I would then just post those photos, okay? Okay. Just photos of me and you. Yeah. I'd post those on, on social media and say like, hey, this is Brian. Here's like, and I would give like a, a little paragraph of like just a snippet of your life Yeah. For the, for the 15 minutes that I learned of you while you were here taking those pictures. I would post that on social media. did that for one, once a week for a whole year. Interesting. How'd that go? Okay. That's good. Yeah. We should do one of those. But then people wanted more. We should do a little throwback. Yeah. People and, wanted and, more. And, and then, that's what that, then that's what turns into a podcast. When people want more. People want meat and pizza in my reviews. Yep. I'm like, I don't want to do it. And another person, another person, another person. Yep. Eat them, eat them, eat, eat, eat. I'm like, okay. So now you're eating them. So now we eat them. Yep. You know what I mean? So 200 like, episodes. Bro. 200. And yeah, we got some, we got the lighting in here is like a little, change up a little, little over here, some of this stuff. And I see that. It's, uh, it's a little more dramatic in yeah, here now. What, I do, see you, that. what do you think? I like it a lot. I yeah. asked you for, I asked you for even more dimmer, but we can't do because of the cameras. That's I know. I, I, I would, and we'll have to talk to Eric about this uh, after. But yes, I would, I would prefer more dim as well. Yeah. Because like, um, for you and I right now, like live in person, it's pretty fucking bright. Mm -hmm. Like it feels like it's just right though. It's not bad. Yeah, it, 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 it is, but it, but it's also still like really bright. Like you said, like I like I like dimming lights. Yeah. you know, not like not like super super dim, mm -hmm. but but dim. It doesn't have to be yeah. like I don't want like you know, it doesn't need to be as bright as you don't know, feel like you're living on the sun. Right, right. But <laughs> but I uh, the the word we used right before I think we started was cozy. Yes, I'm just trying to create a cozy. Co like a cozy. I couldn't atmosphere. get the word. I couldn't get the word cozy yeah. out. Yeah, you were thinking, yeah, and then I said, I'm like cozy, and you're like, yeah, that's it. So your episode. Who did you have a special guest on the tour episode? Yeah, uh, I think it was uh, me. Oh, Bill Corcoran Jr. Yeah, it was me. a special guest. It was me. With yeah. Jimmy, with Jimmy Martin. Yeah, Jim, the, uh, yeah. Shout out to Jimmy. For, Jimmy T. Martin. For, uh, Jimmy sat on this side of the table. Yeah, that was the first time uh, me and in, in you know in well in five years, but four years of the show. For the first time in in four years of the show, I sat on your side of the table. It's coming out this Wednesday. I know this episode. Yeah. Our, our episode, this episode's gonna come out in a little while after that, of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. But I'm really looking forward to. Uh, the, the listening again i didn't know that about the first year okay yeah. i didn't know that that's why i need you to go into it for a minute for me yeah and yeah, then uh yeah. i'm looking forward to um listening to your podcast by then you know by then it's going to be out in the open i know you just left the family business right yeah 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 do big decision uh, big decision that you're doing this full time yeah which can, is fantastic it's crazy <clears throat> I, I was just i think talking to myself earlier today but when i said to myself i'm a full-time content creator now that th you know how good that felt to say it's amazing like you know how many people and this isn't like i'm not like like bragging or i'm not like knocking anyone but you know how many people say i want to be a full-time content creator or or some of your friends say to you what do you plan on getting out of what you're doing when i started yes. making my reviews in the beginning what are you planning on getting out of yeah, this? Like, i'm like, like i don't know i'm like, having fun yeah like what are you doing dude yeah. i got i got the same thing dude i still got those those questions up until like maybe even the last like year i think like a year and a half ago um, at this point it's probably been almost two years but like when I bought this building, then I think maybe people were like, oh, okay, Bill's uh, kind of serious. Yeah. He's bought a fucking yeah. building, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, even like I said, like up until not long ago, I just had somebody a week ago say like, hey, uh, you make money doing this? Bro. <laughs> Kingston. Kingston pays Bro. us to do this. Kingston yeah. pays you to do this. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the municipal building's uh, paying us. Yeah, right. Uh, 
but but yeah same thing like dude, i i got the same shit from people like oh like is this like you, you like what are you gonna do with that like yeah. why why are you doing that like oh what's the point oh you look you look stupid oh that's silly oh stop doing that it's like well they want to do it themselves they do yeah it's it's, it's always it's always like in my it's opinion always, it's always their own insecurities yes you know and it's yeah. people that are afraid to put themselves out there mm -hmm. in any form of media whether it's audio video don't matter um but yeah man when i like i said sitting here now and being able to say that i'm a full-time content creator there's nothing like it it's amazing it is it it's, is. It's it's and to be able to now also work with people like you mm -hmm. and everybody else, and and anybody else that's also gonna join us because we've got a few more in the works. I'm oh, not yeah, gonna mention sure. it yet, but be, we, I'm looking we, forward to it. It's gonna be great. Yeah, but we have a few more in the works, and I'm just I'm excited to um to really be able to what I feel like OTS is leading the way for the content creator industry mm -hmm. in Northeastern Pennsylvania. I mean, I don't think there's anyone anywhere near near doing what we're doing anywhere near anything in this realm i love being know? part of it and and listen i don't like i'm not saying that like i'm not I know i'm not knocking saying. anyone i'm and and if somebody wants to try to do your similar comment, doing, good your i comment, hope they do your comments well deserved yeah that's and, that's why i'm here yeah thank you that's why i'm here bro thank you I that's why i'm here that's why i'm excited about it yeah what i tell you i, I said it before first time i walked in here last year i didn't know what i was walking into you know what I mean? Yeah. I've seen your content on, on social media. I'm, I'm like, oh my God, follow this. Is, this is amazing. You know, uh, I just came off of doing uh, Scotty Scooch's uh, Sober Sit Down podcast, my first podcast I was ever on. He doesn't do it anymore, but I'm trying to get him on the show, you know? Uh, but I was like, after I did that, I was like, oh, this is really cool. This is, this is really, I want more of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, then like the universe just provides for you sometimes when it you does. need that. And you, um, and you, you like some of my content. And I was like, I got to message this guy. And then I got on your show. And great story, which led us to our speaking event at Wilkes and hopefully much many more places to do that. Yeah. But I said the most important is that I walked in there. I'm like, ah, man, I go, I got to be part of this. I, I just started doing social media more. I was doing it for almost a year. Like for about six, seven months. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just so exciting to do it. I think about a year. I see the memories now from last year. I'm like, oh, wow, some rough reviews right there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Some good ones, but some rough ones. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but hey, you did it. And now you're here. But the following I generated since then into now. And then when you explained to me how the shows work and uh, and these sponsors, I'm like, who the hell? Who the hell is going to want a sponsor? <laughs> B, yeah. doing a brand new food podcast. Mm -hmm. Well, I was proven wrong because people are backing me. They, and they also back you, yeah. which helps them back me. Yes. And uh, the feedback has been tremendous. And I remember when you said, like, you're the only, you know, food podcast in, in the area. Yeah. I'm like, am I really? And then you look it up and it's like, interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I was just like, this is really, really cool. And we've had some really great guests on here. And uh, you, you recommend me some. You reach out to people. Then I, I reach out to people. You know what I mean? And we have some really good guests lined up. And it's so much fun, man. It's so much fun doing it this. It really is. It's not work. And I don't want it to turn into work. Yeah, I agree. I don't want it to turn I don't want it to be stressful. And um do you ever deal with that? So so you're on the you're on the main business side of it. I mean, mm -hmm. I just come in here. What what, what do I always say to you? You're just a talent. I'm just a talent. You're just, <laughs> just a talent. Yeah. I go, why are these microphones yeah. ready? I'm just a talent. You're Let's just a go. Talent. Yeah, yeah. That's why I charge you for the water. Yep. Yeah. But no. they're not realizing that sooner or later, I'll be doing everything like you came in here, you set everything up yourself. Right. You know what I mean? So Yep. The more I do, the better it's going to be. You know what I mean? Well, not the yeah. better it's going to be, but the more I do, the more involved I get to be yep. and the more you could do for the company, yeah. which will and advance us trickle all. down to all of us. Yeah, exactly. For sure, man. Yeah. Do you ever deal with, so four years, almost five years now, four years doing the show, 200 of your podcasts. It's got to be stressful mm. and fun at the same time. You know what? Is it more fun than stressful? Does the fun take over it, the stress? Oh, it's That's definitely great. more fun That's than stressful. Great. That's great. I'll say like up until not long ago when you know I had my heart incident and all that and you know decided to leave. My, I want to ask about that in a minute. Yeah. So go ahead and finish real quick. Then we'll we get, might have, we'll have a, we might have a part two for that. Huh? Uh, we okay. might have to have a part two. Um, but yeah, so what you know, you know, I was supposed to leave my day job June tw June twenty eighth, but you know, with the heart incident and a, and, a, and a bunch of other factors, uh, you know, personally, you know, with you know with with that. Um, I decided to leave immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, I'll, I'll say like up until that point, not that this was stressful, but there was a lot of stress in my life for a million and one different reasons. And I won't. This, this, was, doesn't, this, yeah. was, this wasn't one of them. Yeah. No, I mean, like this was, I mean, of course, you know, to, to the level that this got, I want to say it was stressful, but I had res I have responsibility. And you wanted more time. So not having the, if I'm hearing you right, correct me if I'm wrong, you didn't have 
time. I didn't have the time. But you wanted or needed to put into this right. place. And, now yeah. you, and now it, was, you, it was stressful doing it all. That could be stressful. It was stressful doing it all. So this wasn't stressful. It's a lot of work. You it's told just, me you used to work like, like 7.30 to about 5, 6 o'clock. Yeah. That was just at day job. Yeah. Yeah. That was day job Jesus. only. That's a long day. And then all this. Yeah. And I won't even get into this. No, right? it's but all like, yeah, yeah. But yeah. So, but like, you know, all like this was never stressful. It was just, I'll say in general, stressful doing a lot of stuff. And maybe doing a little bit more than I'll say, maybe I can handle. And everybody probably looked at it like, oh my God, like you're crazy. How are you doing you. all that? And it's like, well, you. well, like now, now that the story's out, now that people know the reason why, like I was doing so much. Well, number one, like I just, I don't stop to begin with. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just my, my work ethic, you know, my brain, my age, just the way I work. Right. But part of it was because I was building myself a business and building myself out of my day job. I was building yeah. a way out of my day job. Mm -hmm. And you know, most people didn't know that some did. Um, but you know, now that I was able to build it as much as I was there, now I'm here, now I'm doing this and we're good, you know? Amazing. I love and, it. And I, I actually, it. I said it to my mom, I was just over her house a few days ago and uh, she's like, so how is it now? You know, meaning like, how is, how, 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 how's it going? Like, do you, are you less stressed now? You don't have the day job anymore. Like, how do you feel? Like, do, do you think you made the right choice? And I said, oh my God, I, I would, I, I said, I will never, ever go back ever, ever. Yeah. Ever. Let me say it. Let me say it one more time. Ever. Ever. <laughs> ever. Right. And I was like, yeah, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happier than ever. I said, like, I was like, and I, right, I was literally, I was on the way out the door and she joked. She's like, okay, yep. Time to go back to work. I said, this isn't work. Like, that's what I said. And you said it before. Yeah. It reminded me like she said, okay, yep, yep. Time for you to go back to work. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm my own boss now. I could, you know, I could make you my own. I said, I said, but it's, I said, but it's not work. I was like, you know, me going there. I said like, of course, you know, obviously I love it. Right. And, you know, maybe it's maybe at some point, at some point as we grow, maybe even bigger, maybe it'll feel a little bit more like work, but there'll be work there'll before, be work. The, before the fun. That's yeah. what it comes down to. Yeah. But like, but honestly, like, and I've said this before, like, I love doing all aspects of it. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, there are there certain parts that I don't, that I like less than others. Definitely. And yeah. that's with anything. Yeah. However, sure. you know, the only things I don't do is edit the show. And, but besides that, like, that's just something that, you know, long story, like, like, that's just not something I'm going to do in this business going or ever, right? Like, that's not my, that's not my strong mm -hmm. suit. But as far as pretty much everything else, like, I've done everything else and I still do a lot of the stuff. I still do, a, you know, a lot of everything else and I've done everything but that, you know? And, and I always say, like, if you don't love the process and the process is 90% behind, not actually behind this mic, but behind the scenes mm -hmm. before showing up here. Yeah. You know, it's before this and after this that all the work comes, as as you know, right? You know, now, now you've experienced it on, on the, uh, you know, on the podcast end. For sure. Like, this is the easiest part. And, um, but again, if you don't love all that other stuff beforehand and then afterwards, well, then you're done. You yeah, know what I mean? And I like, obviously, you know, you like it, you, you know, it's. It's like, I could, cre I could, I could um, relate that to jujitsu. Yeah. All right. If you're not going to learn jujitsu in a day, like, you're not going to learn it in a year. You're going to learn a lot in a year. Yeah. Um, but if um, if you don't want to put the work in two, three times a week. And not, do, the, do the basics. And do the basics and, 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 and sweat, tears, be in pain. You're paying to have somebody put you in a chokehold. Yeah. Okay. But guess what? <laughs> you get to put them in a chokehold too. Yeah. And learn right? how to get out of it. Yeah. When we practice rear naked chokes, they're going to do it to you. You're going to do it to them. Gonna, now, now you know how to do it. Now you know, now you know how to do a proper rear naked choke. Not one where someone's going to flip you over the back or be able to, because the, the defense for a rear naked choke is you got to go to the wrist. All right. You got to go, they come around your neck, the wrist, not this part of the arm, mm -hmm. the wrist or the hand. You want to go, mm -hmm. that's where you want to grab. That's where, that's where your first defensive part is. This is too strong. See, my arm's going up, coming down. Most people don't know that. That's why it works on the street or anywhere or other places where people aren't trained. You know what I mean? Most people aren't, most people aren't trained in that, you know, but you got to put the work in to get better at it. You go out there and you perform a perfect match where you this dominant takedown, control, mount, submission. All right. None of that happens unless you go unless you get put down like that. Unless someone takes you down, controls you, submits you for so many so, so many times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you roll with a when you roll with a black belt in jiu-jitsu, brown belt in jiu-jitsu, all right? Really really good guys and you're white belt, brown belt, even a purple belt. You know, I watch my instructors. Um, you know, Tyler's my instructor at the Wilkesbury gym, and then Frank's the other instructor at the Dunmore gym. And they're the most I train with. You know, then there's Sensei Dom, who's in his 70s, and this guy's just, he's amazing. He can do whatever he wants to you. You know what I mean? Um, but the other black belts, you know, when I roll with them, you know, you never know if you're working or if you're getting one over on them. 
I never know. Um, maybe sometimes with me and Tyler, we're, get, we're getting ready for com the competitions. There could be some times where, you know, I really do get him. You know what I mean? But it's very far in between, but I have to get the initial takedowns. Plus, I'm bigger than him. So he always tells me, he goes, you you be six more pounds than me. He goes, you should be you should be winning some of the situations, even though I'm a black belt. However, there's times where I'll be like, Tyler, turn it on today. And he turns it on. I can't do anything. Smoked, huh? Okay. Yeah. He was standing on me the other day, and I couldn't get him off of me. He started with his knee in my neck. And I'm like, okay, where's this going? And then he started standing. I'm like, what, like, what the fuck? By the time he got on me, I couldn't get him off of me. He was just standing on me. I'm like, this is ridiculous. They can do whatever, you, whatever they want. It's, you have to put the work in just like you put the work in behind the scenes here. I don't want to get off too much of a tangent, but you got to put the work in to get better. And there's blood, sweat, and tears leading up to where things are semi-normal. Semi but people love that. That's why they join the gym. That's why they love doing that. They want to challenge. I need a new challenge. The gym's not enough for me. I want to come, come take a free jiu-jitsu class. They get out. You know, 99% of the class was them getting crushed, but the 1% was like, oh, you see, I, I almost got a chokehold on somebody, and they're so excited about it. I'm like, well, keep coming back, and you'll be able to put that choke on, choke on them perfectly. It's great. The kids' class is the most satisfying pill. Most of the time, before kids' class, I, I just got done doing some paperwork, some computer work, and I'm sitting around, and I'm like, oh, God, it's class time. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's not in the mood for it. However, I just told Tyler the other day, right after kids' class is over, 45 minutes, I'm in the best mood ever. I'm like, I'm like I feel great now. I feel great now. Then I bring that energy. The energy for the kids' class goes from, ah, oh, man, I go, oh, here we go again. You know what I mean? Like another class. Um, even with the adults sometimes. However, I never feel that way when the class starts. That's like anything. I mean, there, there could be times where you don't want to even come here. I got to come there, set the cameras up, man. Oh, shit. You know, but then you get here, you're like, you just immediately light up yep and then i show them then i bring my mug in here and start talking and start yip yapping you know <laughs> yeah. and uh but yeah but the, the kids come in they're playing with each other before class and then they line up and um i've i've become i've been able to take charge of the class now ty's been waiting for me to take charge of the class like so when the tyler's like kids as soon as he opens his mouth i'm right over i'm the like, kids I, I get out of line i line them up perfectly listen be, before five o'clock the kids play tag or they play this game called like sharks and jellyfish, whatever the fuck it is. You know what I mean? So they, it's a, it's become a great community for the kids to come in there. And a lot of kids come in that are shy. They're nervous. Um, this, that, the other, right. Um, looking for friends. Um, you know, sad to say most, a lot of them have more than one, one parent. The mother brings them in and, um, but they come in and you know, after a couple of weeks, they're not shy anymore. They're outgoing. They play tag. So for 15 minutes before class, they get to play around, do whatever they want to do, right? Five o'clock starts, boom. They're lined up in rank. If it's jiu-jitsu class, they line up in rank. We don't start warm-ups until they're all quiet because if they don't, if they keep it up, they have to do burpees before they warm up. And they know the kids know this now. It's all about discipline. It's all about discipline, which leads into their training, which builds up their confidence. Without discipline, there's no, there's nothing else you could do in jiu-jitsu class. You have to be, you have to listen. Are we lenient with the kids? Tyler goes to me one day. He goes, I hear what you're saying, but don't forget their kids. He goes, you gotta give them a warning. You gotta talk to them. Now, if I make a kid do burpees for acting up, talking too much after a warning, he does the burpees. Then I get down to a knee. I'm like, do you know why you had to do burpees and the rest of the class didn't have to do burpees? And they appreciate that. Whether they're, whether they're six or they're 12. They appreciate you talking to them like they're like they're a person, not a, not just a kid in class. Because I don't treat them that way. I wouldn't want to be treated that way. I respect them; they respect me. Even though the, even between the five year olds, six year olds, all the way to the twelve year olds, into the adult classes, you know what I mean. And it's just when class is over, we do we do warm up, we learn a couple moves, and seeing the kids progress is like watching your own business progress. It's absolutely it's so incredibly satisfying. When these kids come in here and they don't have no social life, they're getting picked on, we get, they get picked on by bullies at school and we teach the kids anti-bullying techniques as well. If your confidence is built up, no bully's gonna fuck with you, whether you're a kid or an adult, you know what I mean? There's no, there's no room for that, there's no yeah. room for that. And it's not, even the, it's not even the kid's fault if they're a bully, you know what I mean? I used to pick on people when I was in school, I just didn't wanna be there anymore. I was a shitty, I, was, I could have been a shitty person when I was younger, picking on people in school, but like, like I had the ability to actually be able to apologize to some of those guys. You know what I mean? Either it was on social media or if I saw them in person, hey, sorry, I was a piece of shit to you in school. Oh, it's okay, man. We were kids. Yeah, I know that, but you know what I mean? Like, but sometimes people don't turn out too well when they get picked on in school and shit like that. And I learned from that and I become a better person. And I'm, 
I'll never go back there. And that's why when I see people doing it in person or on social media, something like that, I like to step in and inject myself a little bit. You know what I mean? But my job went from, I was terrified to leave my job. Just like you were probably terrified to leave your job. Comfort, pay, steady paycheck, steady medical insurance, um, retirement, everything that you want from a job, but I wasn't satisfied. I wasn't getting satisfaction from my job. I was miserable. Getting up in the mornings, I was okay. I was motivated to go to work. But once I got there and people started buying in on the craps table, oh my God, I had to stop these people for every day for eight weeks. I can't take it no more. Yeah, yeah. Can't take it no more. The money's not worth it no more. Yeah. And I was able to get out of there and change my life and change my career. And I get to sit here on a Monday afternoon at 1.30, 2 o'clock, and shoot a podcast with you and then go to work at the gym because Tyler's cool as shit. Hey, Todd, I got, I got most of my work done on the computer earlier on. I'll see you about four. No problem, man. I'll see you later. And that's it. I don't take advantage of it. I don't do it every day, but he's understandable. He's also the sponsor of my, he's also the sponsor of the Food Fight podcast. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah, have to, uh, yeah. I have to, they have to give me a little leeway, right? Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I tell him it's a business meeting. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> he looks at yeah. me like, he you knows I'm not wrong. Yeah. But it's like, it's going to be here though. I'm like, I know, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> and Monday's our busiest day too. Like we, we, we do a lot of paperwork on Mondays, but if I get it done, they don't care. Yeah. As long as your work is done, your performance is there. Yeah. That's it. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. It's great. Absolutely great. We're looking to expand as well too. So. Awesome. Yeah. This is exciting, man. Um, well, uh, we're going to have to have a part three. Okay. Maybe, uh, I don't, I don't know if we'll wait, we hold, touch I don't, it every, I don't we, know if we'll wait another year, but yeah, did we touch it? I think I'd have, I think I would like to have you on the food fight podcast. Yeah. All right. So that's could be a possibility. Okay. You gotta become, you, you gotta think be, about you it. You gotta become a foodie first though. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Well, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm like starting to get into some of your reviews and things. I'm going, yeah. I'm going around with you. Yeah, for sure. Oh, so. it's a good time. Yeah. We got to do more of that by the way. Yeah. 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 The Antonio's yeah. was fun. Yeah. Well, I told you that the person from the Antonio's in Nanacoke reached out to me and told me that he sold Mario from Old Forge Antonio's. He sold him the business in 78. Mm. So he has the original, the original. OG what, recipe. Did you already go? I did not go there yet. Can I go with you? Oh, it's going to be a real trip. Oh, yeah, for sure. My like buddy Rock was to come with us. Though. Yeah. Okay. Because Rock was the one that got me started on this. Okay. Thing. He was All the right. first one to go to the River, the River Street one. Okay. So he has to come. And got then it. we'll go meet this guy. His guy he calls himself Luigi, but I don't, that, I don't think that's his real name, though. So anyways. Okay. Well, we, whatever. Yeah, bro. I had a great time here today, man. Yeah, man. We were able to Me talk too. about some different stuff. A couple cans. Uh, a couple cans. Two N's. CNN. You know, CNN. C A N. We got the food A-N-N. fight. We got we got the food fight uh, podcast. Sh- official chaperone. That's Tony right. Soprano. Yep, and the duck. Soprano is the best TV show ever created. It any, is. Any anybody disagrees with me, forget about it. You know what I mean? That's what they say. Forget about it. That's good. One more yeah. time. Forget about it. Do it a little more. Forget about right, it. Show, Sopr- <laughs> ah, Soprano is a terrible ending. Ah, forget about it. There we go. You know Good. what I mean? Yeah, Excellent. bro. Yeah, bro. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go off camera. Have a couple more of these, and uh, I'll see. I'll, <laughs> I'll see. I'll see you back in your. I'll, stu- I'll see you back I'll, in your studio over there. Yeah, sounds good, bro. I have a, I have a long trek over there, man. Thanks a lot for having me back on the show. All right, on the Stacks Podcast, Brian DiMatteo. Thanks for joining me. If you want to see more on the Stacks content, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash on the Stacks podcast or search the hashtag on the Stacks on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn.